अपनी रिकॉर्डिंग चाहिए तो हम रिकॉर्ड कर रहे हैं मैं आपको आपकी रिकॉर्डिंग भेज दूंगी सर ओके ओके सो काइंड ऑफ यू सो काइंड ऑफ यू पहले वाली भी और ये भी रिकॉर्डिंग सर सो आई कैन सेंड यू द रिकॉर्डिंग सर यू डोंट हैव टू बॉदर ओके 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 बेबी प्लीज डू दैट इवन फॉर माय अर्लियर टॉक्स आई डू दैट माय स्टाफ सर विद इन अ डे और टू यू विल हैव द रिकॉर्डिंग सर एक्चुअली गूगल वाले हमको रिकॉर्डिंग एक दिन बाद भेजते हैं तो मैं आपको भेज दूंगी सर संजय भाई जी आफ्टर ऑल राइट सर यस सर यस सर ओके सो आई आई थिंक आई एम नाउ आई एम रेडी Yes, sir. So very warm welcome once again, sir, and we are delighted to have you here, sir. And sir, I since we have already introduced you, and you need no introduction, so yes, sure. I think yeah. words fall short. So I I request you to please begin your lecture, sir. And from what I know, what I have before me, sir, you are going to be talking to us about the Chandrayaan three and the Aditya L one missions today, sir. Okay. Something we are all very curious to know in detail. So thank you, sir, and please begin, sir. okay oh so so i i also welcome all of you to be here with me again and i i uh, assure you that i feel equally happy and privileged to be with all of you here once again and uh, it, it's very nice talking to the intelligent curious minds like uh, all of you sitting with me and uh, so i i also thank the uh, the entire team of organizers in fact it's a team work and all of you uh, do it together so my my heartfelt thanks to all of you and my best wishes to all the participants and delegates who provide us the main motivation for talking yes all right so with this uh, uh, welcome words uh, let us now begin on our uh, today's talk and we have uh, chosen this uh, topic to be the most uh, current topic actually the chandrayaan 3 and the aditya l1 this morning when i looked at the newspapers i already found Uh, that uh, at least nabharat times indian express and hindustan times they all had big news items on the chandrayaan 3 and it's it's a uh, vikram lander and the pragyan rover so uh, well, let let me begin from that point so so what i saw today in fact uh, i mean as, as you all be uh, i i'm sure you are much more aware of these things than i am so i i concentrate mainly on the concepts and forget some of the uh, technical words and so on so uh, today is a very important day in the history of uh, our chandrayaan 3 uh, our lander and vikram uh, about 20 22 days ago they were put in the sleep mode and uh, because it was going the the night was going to begin there on the on the lunar surface uh, and the temperatures where our uh, vikram lander and uh, pragyan rover they are being parked the temperatures uh, in the night they go below minus 200 degree celsius so <clears throat> but of course so since yesterday the moon again has got the down so the there is sunshine now again and it's morning time in the on the lunar surface so our uh, one lunar day is equivalent to our 14 earth days and one lunar night is equivalent to our 14 earth nights so it was in the sleep mode both of them were in, put in the sleep mode and you see the main purpose the main aim main objective of our chandrayaan 3 uh, project has already been achieved in the sense you see the main aim of this project chandrayaan 3 in particular was uh, to be to to see to demonstrate and to see for ourselves that we could make a soft landing soft landing on the surface of the moon this was first main could we do it successfully so this was the first main task 
and we made it yes then the second uh, important task was could we row around on the surface of the moon yes we could so our rover has done uh, uh, during the during the first phase uh, first phase i am calling the first 14 days uh, of earth then 14 days it was night there so our pragyan rover was able to row around for almost 100 meters from at the site where it it was it landed and so we are now all waiting uh, every day hour by hour to 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 listen back from from our uh, isro command center uh, what is the next news so uh, the uh, we hope we hope that uh, maybe they would awaken themselves once again their original life is fun actually let me explain but originally for first 14 days only but uh, because when the temperatures go down in the night to minus 200 degrees uh, celsius then uh, you see things might things might uh, uh, get cold enough and they might need uh, some kind of warming so we only hope uh, that Uh, perhaps it would revive itself again from the sleep and it would start working again if it starts working then then it should work for another 14 earth days one lunar day now l- l- let us uh, begin our things from the beginning this is the first thing that so all of us we, we keep track of the uh, news and activities what is going on on the moon Uh, let me make a brief uh, brief introduction to the chandrayaan project actually i remember it was uh, month of october november 2008 when our first chandrayaan uh, which means chandrayaan burn in the series of chandrayaan uh, landed on the no it, it did not land uh, baj 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 sent to moon and at that time everything Uh, but perfectly fine everything was successful we had designed a so called uh, moon impact probe uh, about 32 kilograms or so and it was dropped uh, on the surface of the moon from a height of let us say about 100 kilometers so we dropped it from a height of 100 kilometers and then it it uh, so uh, it would obviously hit the moon and uh, th- during that uh, moon impact probe impact on the lunar surface india was able to discover water on the surface of the moon what happened when the impact probe hit the lunar surface so obviously you would expect some some dust and something uh, coming out on that spot and this was expected that maybe if there is some some form of water or uh, ice water or whatever so perhaps and this be became successful so india became the first country in the world to discover water on the surface of the moon and this happened during october november 2008 uh, during our very very first chandrayaan 1 uh, project so this was the first uh, successful experiment uh, with chandrayaan 1 and the finding of water on the surface of the earth and in chandrayaan 2 to my mind to my opinion it is also equally uh, successful we of course uh, could not put our lander uh, vikram and uh, pragyan rover at that time uh, which was sent along with chandrayaan 2 however in chandrayaan 2 we sent one orbiter so that orbiter in fact is functioning till date till today so that that is a great success i i would think in fact 
when now we see the pictures uh, in the in the social media and everywhere on the tv and that uh, oh this uh, our uh, uh, vikram lander and uh, pragyan rover uh, being sent uh, along with the project of uh, this chandrayaan 3 the latest in this in this series Uh, so it is sitting somewhere i mean there is some kind of light some some green yellow and so on uh, surface lunar surface and who is doing this for us who is sending these pictures for us it is the orbiter of chandrayaan 2 this we need to remember so some people they without knowing things so well they simply call oh our chandrayaan 2 was a failure no it was not a failure it's it's a great success even date to till, till date it's sending us the data and not only that the orbiter of chandrayaan 2 is successfully communicating till today till this time with our chandrayaan 3 in in chandrayaan 3 we did not send any orbiter we did not send any moon impact probe this time it was little bit we were little more ambitious than last time so <clears throat> this time of course we have sent a lander and a rover and uh, it has been great full i would call it full 100% success now it's only a bonus if we again uh, uh, our, our scientists isro team sitting at our command center in bangalore they are they are they are trying to to wake it up sending uh, commands and sequence of commands trying to wake it up if it wakes up then uh, it will start working for another 14 days so th th this is already a success now but prior to 14 earth days when it was already operational okay when our lander and rover they were already operational you see the propulsion module of chandrayaan 3 is now working as a natural satellite of uh, not natural artificial satellite of moon you see what is the difference in artificial and natural satellite let me just tell you so moon is a natural satellite of earth you see whereas now all the satellites being sent by us to to moon uh, they are uh, artificial satellite they are man made but but uh, but uh, uh, moon itself is a natural satellite uh, it's not made by us okay so its history is long we talk about it some other time so now coming back to this uh, project of chandrayaan 1 2 3 and the the present one chandrayaan 3 let me explain a few silent points you see in the first place we have usual As, as a physicist and that to a theoretical physicist i i concentrate more on the concepts and i try to catch the concept which i remember also that i forget the technical detail so the first important uh, but here i would keep telling you some messages for the younger people you see so i i can see the number 84 uh, of participants so um, everybody has his own brains his own mind his own likings and everybody a wants to develop one's own uh, and one that is the correct thing to do that whatever i know i i my my teachers told me that you always have to try to build on the base of your knowledge that you have earned so far on that date now you try to build it further you see in in what how many directions how many dimensions you can go you can work if you find okay Uh, it's not interesting or i i find something more interesting to 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 do then i will say okay now let me try this so in physics people usually keep changing the fields which is not bad that's a correct thing you are a life system we are a life system we are interacting with each other so <clears throat> first thing is to put our put our spacecraft into the into some orbit around the earth Uh, this the, te the the technically they call it injecting the spacecraft in a in a in a in an orbit around the earth but by that time lot of engineering has gone into it lot of technology has gone into it some people like uh, our isro chief uh, somnath and so 
somebody is specialized in the designing construction uh, theory and experiments based on these launch vehicle somebody is specialized on something else now once you put it in some elliptical orbit uh, now you make some so called maneuvers this is a message here our younger generation they must keep catching all the points and they must catch where their interest lies what they can understand what they can develop so uh, i would say that performing some uh, maneuvers uh, the rage keep raising the dimensions or the height of our uh, elliptical orbit once we are in the in the lunar gravity once we enter the lunar gravity then we want to reduce the the size of the original orbit where we entered so this the younger people must catch uh, if something interest to them interests to them they should try to find how do we what is this maneuvering what is this maneuvering a person like me would, would not not go too much into details but younger people depending upon their own interest should try to catch can they do something there do they know something there better and that you can try to develop so this is another thing now <coughs> Uh, for a theoretical physicist there is some more interesting point as a, uh, of concept which i would like to highlight to everybody you see there are uh, our our spacecraft keeps revolving around the earth for for a number of days we consciously decide okay now we have uh, we have raised it enough and let us now put it, put it on a trans lunar trajectory so trans lunar trajectory is some uh, the the last one of it which goes and uh, somehow touches the uh, uh, field of gravitational influence of the moon so you see uh, one important concept lies here uh, as a student of physics as a student of classical mechanics which of course you extend to celestial mechanics you see in the universe everything is is in motion all the time and the same applies also to our solar system no nothing is at rest everything keeps moving uh, let me tell you the the place where i am sitting all of us are sitting this entire place is moving at this moment in the vast interstellar space at a at a speed something like i might remember the order of magnitude 37000 kilometers per second but you see we find that everything is stationary i can see my books lying around and so on because they are stationary with respect to me but i am talking of earth as a whole our solar system as a whole okay uh, so it's moving in the interstellar space with such high speeds of 30 to 40 kilometers uh, 30 to 40 thousand kilometers per second so you can imagine when we begin the talk when we end the talk how many kilometers we have traveled all of us together have traveled in the interstellar space this is very interesting i mean these are some points that fascinate me so <coughs> now uh, and and these days in the in the internet you can also find three dimensional models of let us say of our own solar system where our earth is uh, revolving around the earth our moon is revolving around the earth they they look very catchy and very very uh, fascinating to me or uh, in the earlier days we could only see the pictures you see now you can see the 3d 3d pictures and that too also in motion because some videos all these there are there are sites you can discover and perhaps you already know them better than i know so my, my point is when i start from earth when i aim to reach the moon um, after some some days 30 40 50 days whatever i decide i would like to make sure when i start from the surface of earth i have to know that the place in the space where i am going is a vacant point in the space time it's a vacant point in the space time there is no moon at that point by the time we arrive that area that domain 
moon would have arrived there shortly before we arrived there you see shortly before we arrived there and this we must make sure and similarly because otherwise if if moon is not there then there is no gravitational force there there is no gravitational field there who will who will welcome us who will capture us no nobody then what happens our spacecraft gets lost into the vast space vast interstellar space it gets lost so this is what we make sure but uh, thanks to this younger generation like you people they are smart enough intelligent enough they make all these calculations now using the advanced computers and all these 3d 3d orbits in motion so and now we again you see we we have to make it sure again and again before we put our spacecraft the chandrayaan or whatever on the translunar uh, trajectory we we must again make sure that yes because before you put it on that trajectory things are in your control you only raise or lower or you change the size or the dimensions of your elliptical orbit which is under your control it's a controlled super controlled experiment so you all these things are known you can not only keep raising you can even in you can decrease also you can decrease it also the size of the elliptical orbit so you can keep it in the orbit as long as you want okay and of course depending on the fuel but we don't depend too heavily on the fuel we work more we drive our uh, our our source of energy mainly we drive from the gravitational force we we plan our things like that and the same is also true when we once uh, at some point again enter the moon's gravity so we make sure at uh, each and every point that we are going in the right direction and once you have put your spacecraft on the translunar trajectory so then this trajectory uh, would at some point touch the gravitational field of the moon okay and this we have made sure uh, this i wanted to emphasize that we must make sure that okay when we arrive at that particular domain at in that particular area moon's gravitational field must be there to capture us otherwise we would be lost into the space everything would be would fail okay so uh, assuming that everything we have done perfectly well now we once we reach the moon's uh, gravity then inserting the these are some crucial steps inserting the our, our spacecraft into the into a moon orbit obviously the initially it would be a bigger orbit then we control it and we reduce it and each time we do it with some maneuvers of course sitting on earth Th these are some areas of interest that i would suggest that my younger generation must my my younger generation must uh, seriously think and so, capture what is the basic parameter to change the uh, orbit oh th this uh, i am uh, i am sorry i would not be able to tell you but but this is not one parameter you see maneuver is kind of as the as they loosely call it burns so somehow they they provide energy to our spacecraft to change so they they call it maneuvers they call it burns so they and each time of course we we also uh, spend some energy on that for this we spend our our energy on that and uh, uh, for that we keep the fuel necessary fuel <coughs> with the spacecraft so uh, now uh, supposing assuming that we have uh, we have done it properly correctly and now we are in in a orbit around the moon so then the next question comes of reducing the size of our elliptical orbit around the moon until we really land on the moon so this is one thing but these things for our isro scientists uh, are somehow uh, routine routine things because they keep launching lots of spacecraft uh, some few months ago i think in april or something we also put a, a 
bunch of spacecrafts of of uh, uh, Singapore, and for many Western countries we do it. You see, so uh, putting many of them in one go into the space. So uh, now another or, or the last most crucial phase is so you see you are in a in a lunar orbit and uh, it is some kind of ellipse um, uh, of some size so obviously your spacecraft is traveling along a tangent to that particular elliptical orbit you keep reducing keep reducing the size of the orbit now obviously we are getting closer and closer to the moon and this time for chandrayaan 3 what we we designed was when we reach at a point something like uh, 25 to 30 kilometers uh, above the lunar surface okay so which means vertical height of the of the spacecraft from the surface of the moon after that we are supposed to start descending on the moon now crucial thing starts and uh, uh, to be able to tell you correctly uh, can you can you see my th th there is some some graph which i had made some at that time and uh, i i would just tell you what it is so you see <coughs> for this now now let me give you an example of my room for example supposing my room has the height of 25 feet or 25 kilometers now one uh, arm of my one arm of my uh, room is let us say several times longer than the other arms so imagine that uh, let me consider two parallel walls of my room i am and my the rooftop is something like 25 kilometers above the above the floor so i am on the top of one wall and i want to descend at the bottom of the wall which is parallel to opposite to this so just to give you an idea that it is not 25 kilometers which our space craft is descending no 25 kilometers is the vertical height of my room you see but for descending 25 kilometers it has to travel much longer let us say almost approximately let us say diagonal of the of the room okay it's not perfectly diagonal but something like that so it it goes uh, descending 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 on the on the now here so we divided it this is actually this was phrased as the time of terror you see and this we are supposed to descend let us say in about 20 minutes time so this 20 minutes time and this 25 kilometers vertical height of the space craft our chandrayaan from the surface lunar surface of the moon uh, 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 could, could, could i just take a gap of one uh, one or two seconds please Uh, sorry <laughs> sorry for the interruption so uh, let us get back to the point what i was explaining i am uh, at a height of 25 25 kilometers and i want to descend to the zero height so this is vertical and but for that i also have to let let me resolve it in the vertical and horizontal direction so i am uh, want to descend 25 kilometers here uh, all together in roughly 19 18 minutes and then i have to uh, go down to the uh, bottom of the other wall this is this is one point so uh, this was divided into for understanding purposes and for practical purposes you see when our space craft is in a tangential uh, in in an elliptical orbit with with very very high speeds so we obviously while reducing the sizes dimensions of the orbits we also keep reducing the uh, the velocity or the speed or the velocity of our space craft 
So, uh, but still at a height of 25 kilometers, it's still uh, a speed or velocity is still much, much higher. And you see, now we have to bring it to the zero. Otherwise, it would, it would uh, not be a soft landing. We want to make a soft landing, you see. So, uh, we, we uh, apply the brakes, kind of, uh, in, a, in a layman's language. You very heavily apply the brakes, and uh, in so you you come down. Uh, let us see from 25 kilometers to only seven to eight kilometers height, and this much you descend in about 11 minutes. Uh, this much th this is called rough braking phase, and after that for few seconds, 10 seconds or so, this was called altitude hold phase. I mean your spacecraft could hover around. Uh, at a height of uh, 7.5 kilometers above the vertical height this and you see the, the, these uh, our our uh, there are on board lots of instruments which keep telling us exactly how much is the vertical height how much is the uh, vertical component of velocity how much is the horizontal component of of this uh, at the time of descent of chandrayaan uh, 3 so <coughs> of course before we start this power descent, our uh, lander module uh, got separated already from the propulsion module. We, I, I forgot to mention it. So it is the uh, propulsion module we have left behind. Orbiting is still as, a, as, a, as an artificial satellite of moon. And now we are, we are, we are descending on, on, on this. So it is only the uh, only the lander uh, and the rover is inside the, the, the lander. It is lander is containing the rover, it is inside the lander. So, our lander module, I mean, two of them together, the lander module is descending at the side. So, we can hold it at the same height or something for about uh, 10 seconds. Then, again, uh, what we do, it you see, it was it was initially tangentially uh, moving to the elliptical orbit. Now we have to also uh, uh, gradually bring, make it vertical. So we first turn it around by 59 degrees and then for for few minutes and few seconds we, we want to make it hovering around at that height. Then we again uh, continue further descent. Now uh, you have to somehow straighten the legs, stretch them. You see, they were, they were not yet uh, straightened and stretched. So we, uh, we, we stretch the legs, straighten them. This is, uh, and then uh, it's a kind of a uh, artificial intelligence for, for some time, for assuming purposes that we give a sequence of commands to our, our, our uh, lander module from our station on earth in Bangalore and but in the last uh, for the last four minutes three or four minutes or so we sort of uh, stop giving the uh, commands and it is supposed to work on its own you see you you want to teach a little child how to work and so you sometimes chalo ungli pakdo okay catch my hold please now step by step and so on and after some time you see oh the child can start running so then you can leave it on its own uh, at least for some time so this is what also happened now so after the uh, the the legs uh, be uh, another two minutes or so then the legs were stretched they were straightened they were rotated by another uh, remaining degrees of nine 31 degrees so now it becomes vertical to, to the surface of the earth and now it could make its own decision in the in the so called smartphones there is a device i am not using it uh, face recognition facial recognition a similar analogous thing was there on our on our uh, lander module so it could see the surface and see uh, budget good enough, budget a travel free base where it was going to end, to, to, to land. 
so and this for the last 3 4 5 minutes this watch made kind of automatic means it will take not automatic but it will use its own intelligence to decide where to land it had the capabilities to shift around by a few meters on on any direction if it finds that no there is a crater underneath it will it will move further 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 and find some kind of a planar area where it could land so this, this is one very and in fact uh, we had uh, we had made and uh, not i mean uh, this was the step here our chandrayaan 2 this lander of chandrayaan 2 failed because we uh, we could not rotate it to uh, before we could rotate it to by by 90 degrees first 59 or 60 degrees is okay but then it was not yet uh, vertical uh, to the to the lunar surface and uh, prior to that it it started descending you see then what will happen its trajectory would be would be changed all physics people would know it in, in immediately yes uh, now it, it if it still has some angle there another 30 31 degrees and you want uh, you why somehow it it loses contact or its own self intelligence no longer works at that time it starts moving moving in a slanted direction not 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 vertically downwards okay so here uh, this was the failure our on our part and this time we had done this was this was called uh, i have forgotten the so many terms they coin at that time failure proof or something failure based uh, failure based model some such thing the uh, the people were using this term which means you would not make that failure once again you see whatever you did during during chandrayaan 2 project we would not do that again so this was the uh, but we should never forget that chandrayaan 2 the orbiter of chandrayaan 2 is still working communicating with the lander so this this was this uh, overcoming this uh, period of uh, so called time of terror as they called it there was some one more term uh, that they used but la- let us not go into the terminology i am to big in memorizing terminologies so um, for that reason i as a child i knew i could not become a botanist or a biologist or so I, i can i could not memorize many thing many names you see uh, some of the names that i learned in hindi as my mother tongue i still remember but you t- tell me 100 times the name of uh, some vegetables except for very few you again ask me what it uh, what it is called in english i would not know <laughs> you see so so these are some human limitations now so this time uh, thank god and thanks to the, the young scientist like you who made it so successful who worked so hard on this everything carefully and they were able to make it so the last 3 minutes the the spacecraft can uh, hover around for few seconds it can decide it can look down uh what is the surface like and so on and it's oh this is this is fine this i find acceptable okay then it then it, it descends there otherwise it can shift around by a few meters another mistake we had done during chandrayaan 2 was we gave it a very small pitch there you see very small area compared to to the one that we have given it now to our chandrayaan 3 now this is 2.5 kilometers by 4 kilometers and that was i don't know some few meters by few meters so that you have to be so precise and so the chances and then it it did not descend vertically but it was slanted by some some angle okay and that, that these were some of our limitations you see we can we can always learn from our mistakes and if <laughs> if we are prepared to to correct our errors and mistakes of the past without getting irritated and uh, so we have to be very much flexible and open minded to learn how to improve oh what are the mistakes that i made and how do i improve very good so this much for this and uh, successes are already too much you see we made a soft landing we 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 rove around on the surface of the moon 
by almost 100 meters. This is not a small thing. And before the, our scientists put it to sleep, you see, the, 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 the Pragyan rover was put to sleep two days earlier than the, the Vikram lander. And before they were put to sleep, they made a hop experiment, which is very, very significant. So, I mean, you sitting on Earth in Bangalore in our Space Command Center, you give some commands and then your Vikram lander decides to jump. It jumped to a height of something like 40 centimeters and then it again landed something like uh, 30, 40 uh, meters away. This is a very, very major breakthrough. Very, very major breakthrough. We must recognize it because it, it will go down long way into the history of this project. Now, so you know, okay, I mean, one day we, we cannot always keep going and uh, leaving our stuff there, okay. Uh, we have to be sometime able to bring some of things back. How do you bring the lunar samples from the lunar surface? Unless you can't, your, your lander can't even lift itself, then what will you do? So this is a major step, major success, major breakthrough I, I personally consider. You see, we must learn appreciating others. So this, uh, it was able to, so this hop experiment was so successful. And now, you see, our originally it was designed, designed to uh, work for the first 14 Earth days, uh, which is one lunar day. And then we put it to sleep with a hope. We have, we have actually not put any extra arrangement for heating it, for keeping it heated uh, for the next 14 nights when the temperature goes to minus 250 or 60 degrees Celsius. So this is, this is one, one, one thing. In future we might do it. But uh, still it's robust enough and there is still a very good hope that it might revive. So we have to, we have to keep track of the news for the next few days. Uh, when it, uh, would it wake up or not and what happens, okay? So, yes, now, uh, uh, <coughs> so, yes, was there any question? No, okay. Yes, sir. There is a question, sir, ki what kind of investigation the rover will take there? Uh, I'm curious to know about that. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, let me postpone it uh, for a, for a few minutes. So, uh, the uh, you mean the the what rover is supposed to be doing? But by now, actually, we have already discovered oxygen. We have discovered sulfur. We have discovered many more chemical elements. I I won't know their names. Chromium, magnesium, this and this and this. You can read it in the findings of the of the rover on the surface. But one major, I mean, a few there are few very important things like uh, in the base of our lander there was a device which would dig into the surface of the moon it was able to dig 10 centimeters underneath on the surface of the moon and there was a device also attached for measuring its temperature so you see on the above the surface of the moon the temperatures were let us say plus 50 degrees celsius or higher but when you go below the surface of the moon, even by 10 centimeters, the temperature goes down by uh, 10 degrees below the zero degrees. Okay, th th this is one major thing. And uh, about, you see, this uh, our rover uh, is fitted with some so-called in situ experiments. This is a term, in situ means uh, it will look around for things uh, in its own neighborhood. So looking for things in its own neighborhood is uh, called in situ experiment. So there are there are few payloads or instruments designed only for that, and uh, so it's making it involves many things, uh, measuring plasma density, measuring this, measuring seismicity, and so on. Uh, could there be any seismic activity on the lunar surface? All these things are these our uh, rover Pragyan and. Vikram lander, they are provided with something. But uh, most important thing is that uh, Pragyan, before being put to sleep, was able to communicate well with the lander. Lander communicates with us uh, on the earth as well as with the 
orbiter of the Chandrayaan 2. So, uh, put together these three objects, they are able to talk to each other and they are able to talk to us sitting on Earth. So, it's a live system, you see. So, uh, uh, before, they, before uh, I also keep track of my watch, because I must also touch upon the Aditya L1, which is also quite important, uh, uh, then if we have time, we can always come back to Chandrayaan. Uh, in fact, very soon we are also uh, in, the, in the pipeline, the Gaganyaan. So Gaganyaan would again be a series of uh, experiments. Uh, th there would be one Biomitra, uh, where eventually, initially we would, we would send an unmanned mission. Uh, so we would be in the, in the orbit of Earth for a few days, okay, making experiments and so on. But then we would uh, our uh, two or three uh, women astronauts are supposed to be going uh, on board in that Biomitra device. So it would be circling around our Earth like uh, long ago Rakesh Sharma did it on some spacecraft from Soviet Union. So this is our, uh, uh, this is our dream pipeline. And now <coughs> let, let, me, let me spend some time, you are physicists, and I am talking to intelligent people like you. Uh, in Aditya L1, I would tell a few crucial things in the first place. Here, we always stay around some orbit uh, around the Earth. This is okay. So we, we are not going to enter into the gravity of some other, uh, other satellite like moon. Okay, so we stay. With, but uh, I, I would like to remind that uh, four or five years after Chandrayaan 1, we were also able to go to the, to the Mars. That was, a, that was a very successful project. Uh, it was, uh, we sent Mars orbiter, uh, Mangalyan. So this was also fully successful. And uh, now I come back to Aditya L1. So this is something which I would like to tell my physicist friends. Uh, what is this album doing there along with Aditya? You find name Aditya for many people, okay? Uh, the ra rising sun or something like this. Uh, many people have this name Aditya. Even I have many friends. So, as a physics person, we all know Mr. Lagrange. We, you know Lagrange, Euler-Lagrange equations. Uh, Mr. Lagrange existed around 1770. Okay. So, uh, here, there is a question that we have two heavy objects. One is sun and one is earth. Heavy in the sense, earth is much, much lighter to, than the sun. But still it's heavy enough when, when we talk of a third a spacecraft like Aditya L1. So uh, initially for this two body system uh, like sun and earth or like uh, earth and moon you can make a calculation <coughs> in some other windows I do have some of them I might uh, make this calculation uh, in the near future try to, to make it this, this is rather simple so you can make a calculation of so called Lagrange points these are the if you if you if you plot the phase diagram of this two body system if you like to call it more rigorously three body system but Third body is a tiny object, negligible compared to the masses of Earth and Moon. So therefore, it's also called as restricted three-body problem. Now, uh, I don't want to forget telling you one book. All of you must look, look up at this book. Uh, this is uh, a book by Jordan and Smith, Non-Linear Ordinary Differential Equations. Please just read first few pages. To, so this uh, for nonlinear dynamics, I, I taught nonlinear nonlinear dynamics as a part of my classical mechanics course at Delhi University. We used to have about three weeks course on nonlinear dynamics. There is a one full paper on uh, nonlinear dynamics, uh, but we had a, some a small introductory portion of this in classical mechanics at some time. Now it is no longer there; it has been removed from there. Uh, so, uh, I mean to, to, to reduce the size of classical mechanics course. Anyway, so 
दिस बुक इज ए वेरी फंडामेंटल बुक देर आर प्लेंटी ऑफ बुक्स ऑन नॉन लीनियर डायनामिक्स बट माई लाइकिंग दिस इज वन ऑफ द क्लासिक बुक्स जॉर्डन एंड डी डी डब्ल्यू और समथिंग जॉर्डन जी ओ आर डी एन जॉर्डन एंड स्मिथ यू 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 विल फाइंड इट इन द गूगल जॉर्डन एंड स्मिथ एंड यू कैन डाउनलोड द पी डी एफ फाइल जस्ट रीड द फर्स्ट फ्यू पेजेज सो फॉर ए फिजिक्स स्टूडेंट इफ आई जस्ट मैंसन दैट वन डायमेंशनल हारमोनिक ऑसिलेटर और ए सिंपल पैंडोलम यू सी सो यू कैन यू कैन राइट डाउन द इक्वेशन ऑल ऑफ अस कैन राइट डाउन द इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन एंड सो ऑन so uh, when you take explicit dependence on time then it's a non autonomous system where you take uh, uh, i mean in any case you have implicit dependence of time like your x and p is would depend on time okay so uh, you you write down for example write down the total hamiltonian for a conservative system uh, when there is no explicit dependence of time this is an autonomous system then uh, you uh, all of us remember that the phase trajectory of a simple harmonic oscillator it just an ellipse which is p square by some constant plus x square by some constant equal to 1 this is actually a hamiltonian is constant it's a conserved quantity total energy of the system so you divide out by suitable things then you get p square by some constant plus x square by some constant equal to 1 the standard equation of an ellipse and now if you don't treat these constants as constants but as constant parameters then it would be a family of curves okay so one path is a phase trajectory phase path and then if you have them uh, not fixed even for by equal to mx plus c this is straight line if you treat m and c as parameters constant parameters then it's a family of curves okay so uh, you can find the phase trajectories these are called phase trajectories so here for uh, if you study the phase trajectories for a, a two body system like sun and earth or like uh, earth and moon uh, i was i was one night two three days ago um, i was almost uh, uh, during my sleep i was trying to think why have been ever thought of putting one space craft in in the lagrange points of earth and moon then the next important question would be what you want to do there so this in the first place let me see what are the lagrange points as a physics people if you whenever you find time please do try to look into this uh, phase diagrams of two body systems or three body systems or restricted three body systems like our sun earth and this satellite so there are some points of equilibrium which are classified into various kind of things saddle point nodal points focal point okay and uh, bifurcation point there, there are a, a classification of such things for for any any non linear dynamics problem gravity my field is a highly non linear system and i do these things with my other collaborators the phase uh, diagrams of boson stars has been my field of interest and uh, american physical society appreciated our work you can find it in the in the in the google some papers on in physical review physical review and so on and some phase diagrams of boson stars so here we have to find the phase diagrams of this two body system sun and earth for the time being uh, then so in between there are some five lagrange points they are called as lagrange points these are points of stability fully stable or partly stable partly unstable you can you can look into the literature so uh, now l1 is the nearest to the earth and so what happens around these points uh, l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 there is some domain where uh, no phase path crosses through it you see and i i'm putting it in the physics language so in some domain they, they, these phase trajectories they went to this side they go to other side they go to other side so in between there is some domain uh, uh, where which can be used as a parking place for our space craft so if we park our space craft aditya l1 is going to be parked around in this small domain around l1 at that point we use uh, we need very very minimum amount of uh, very very minimum amount of energy 
we don't need too much of fuel to stay around and so this around this point l l1 we can then calculate some so called halo orbit in this halo orbit we would like to put our spacecraft aditya l1 in a uh, in a halo orbit around the lagrange point l1 l1 l2 l3 are in one line collinear and l4 and l5 are in a line perpendicular to this but l1 happens to be closest to the earth so th this is the this is the advantage that is why we have chosen l1 and then you can calculate this uh, domain and there uh, you can you can calculate this orbit uh, hello orbit and our aditya l1 al already it has started sending some data while on its way to the lagrange point l1 it has not yet made it there it will reach there in some time it was supposed to go in about 120 days or so and then it will be we will we would like to place it in that halo orbit around the lagrange point l1 but here uh, apart from so there are four instruments they look at the sun and make a study of the solar wind solar flare solar plasma radiation charged particles all these various things you can you can find in the literature but one most important thing i would tell you and then there are three instruments they are called in situ so in situ experiments devices sitting on aditya l1 they would uh, look around the activities in that little domain around this point l1 in situ means apne mohalle pados ki baaton ko pata karna kidhar kisne kya kar diya kya hone wala hai okay like that so in situ is your neighborhood in your neighborhood what is going to happen can you measure this can you see this okay you see oh this peepal tree might fall let me construct some some chabutra around it okay fix it up with some more more thoda mitti soil dal ke thoda eet meet cement laga ke pakka kar do hmm like this so you might look at such things in your neighborhood you see so these are called in situ experiments also on chandrayaan on rover and also in aditya l1 and now out of these four instrument that would study that would study the sun uh one instrument is corona graph this is extremely important corona graph so in the first place the height of this lagrange point l1 for the sun earth system is well beyond much much higher than our lunar orbit around the earth so uh, almost four times so what what whatever vertical distance if you if you count in some units from earth to moon then something like four times of that so aditya alban would be placed at a height four times to that of the distance between earth and moon what it means it means uh, when do we see eclipse so uh, sitting on earth we, we receive some sun signs now when uh, when the moon passes through a particular area at a particular time so that it can cover partly or fully the disk of the sun then you would have a solar eclipse okay if it covers the sun disk completely uh, in in one of the these uh, solar eclipses and so on you can find my videos uh, in my youtube channel where i explain what is this uh, uh, solar eclipse it was Uh, passing through uh, south india from almost from kanyakumari towards the bay of bengal and uh, and so on so uh, i was i was sitting in some tv news channel and explaining so um, i would not repeat any of those things but the important concept is once the sun disk is fully or partly covered if it's fully covered then it would lead to a total solar eclipse if it's partly covered then you will have a ring around it so they always the media people ask me oh sir you, do you like a ring or a diamond <laughs> okay so i like both it depends the nature decides for me what are we going to have this time in the in the so in the uh, prior to our 
प्रोजेक्ट आदित्य एल्बन uh and uh, little bit older days not very ancient days but right from the ancient days till now so when there is a total solar eclipse or partly uh, uh, eclipse so the the curious astronomers from around the world they rush to let us say konark or where they can see it for the longest period okay if they if it's visible in brazil they would travel to brazil with their uh, telescopes and you, you find this on the tv news very often they they travel to that place and so on fix up the instruments to look for uh, the solar solar eclipse so uh, the center of the sun you call it photosphere then surrounded by chromosphere then corona so you want to observe and uh, scientific studies our, our aditya alban will also do it but uh, this special instrument being put on our aditya alban this is capable of producing a total solar eclipse artificially so it means when we like sitting on earth we give a command to our aditya alban it will cover up the entire disk of the sun so we have created uh, artificially the total solar eclipse and now so you see in the first place the height of our aditya alban is already four times the height of the moon so it is uninterrupted 24/7 you can have a view of the sun you see and it's well shielded so it would not melt down and now with the help of your coronagraph you can create total solar eclipse artificially in our aditya alban project so a very big achievement and it's aditya alban is going to work for a couple of years not it's not a two days or one or two weeks program it's it's going to last and work survive for a few years so i am very sure that we will get many many important uh, lot of important news and data uh, on this but uh, uh, i just recollected for younger people like you these days there is a concept of so called virtual labs you don't have to really travel to the peop- to to other place you can sit in any place you see uh, my my 84 now i find 85 participants uh, so they are sitting somewhere you see and they are able to we are all able to talk to each other okay now in this project so supposing there is a famous center ayuka in pune there are in in uh, there is this uh, kodai canal there, there is some important astronomical institute in tamil nadu and there are many many leading places you see but you don't have to go there you don't have to physically travel there you see this is the point so what you can do is you can just uh, create this and now supposing you need some password and code words etc now huge experiments like experiment at cern is going on in particle physics a large hadron collider you don't need to travel there to geneva all the time if you join some particular group uh, of this kind of physics of your interest in astronomy or in in uh, space physics or in particle physics wherever you have to somehow have an access to access the data so this data is being stored virtually somewhere on some computer server and if you have the access code and so on you can you can access it and analyze it sitting at your home so uh, in any case the modern generation is very well equipped with the computers and so not not like me but uh, you people are much smarter younger generations i understand get smarter and smarter and more in, and more intelligent you see and this is how the the things progress and they they run so <coughs> uh to 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 my guess uh, to my hopes this aditya alban project is also going to be a very very successful project so far everything is going on in the right direction moving in the direction of uh, whatever we have uh, assumed it to do for us going in the right track so uh, i am sure we will hear the news 
uh, that it has been successfully parked into the halo orbit around the Lagrange point L1. Now some of you can uh, can think and 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 communicate with the ISRO people. If you come across the new ideas for exercises, you can learn how to calculate this Lagrange point. Then, uh, if 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 we put a spacecraft around around the uh, some Lagrange point for the Earth and Moon system, supposing we could do that, then what are we going to study? This people like you should worry about. What are the kind of things that we are we can study? Could there be some? Birth? Of course, uh, uh, if we think our our instrumentation is more stronger, then we might be able to study many things about Moon sitting in some halo orbit around some Lagrange point for the Earth Moon system. Uh, you could you could study and observe many things for Moon. You could observe many things for Earth. So our ISRO has been already, uh, uh, in order to be able to explain and so to say teaching others, I also have to keep learning uh, because they, the people, they ask me and uh, for explanations, you see. And um, uh, right now our program was Engli in English, but I can also e roughly equally well also explain in Hindi. So many channels, they want me to be there because they say, Sir, you Hindi me bahut acha explain karte Please come. Okay, never mind. We should learn. I, uh, uh, I am very good at learning languages. Uh, I, I, I know many of the variants, at least of Hindi. For the, for the time being, I am trying to learn, pick up Sanskrit. But I wish I learn more languages. You see, they are all sweet and nice, very rich languages. Like all lot of uh, music for. Uh, Bengali and for Maharashtra, they have somehow. Uh, so I mean, uh, we should not have a closed mind for language. We should, be we, we should keep an open mind for uh, learning many languages. I'm uh, out of the. I mean, among the European languages, my German happens to be my third language after Hindi and English. Then fourth, I would put maybe French. Then fifth overall, I would put maybe my Sanskrit, <laughs> whatever little. But so uh, we should enrich our things, and it's a good brain brain jogging. You see, now so brain jogging is also important. We should we should keep keep uh, educating ourselves, keep learning, keep an open mind. So uh, perhaps these are some of the main points about. The Aditya Alban project, I have given some remarks about the new openings, like also study these things uh, for the Earth-Moon system. Then, I mean, that much part would be easier and it would, it would cost much less to put one spacecraft there. But then what are we going to achieve out of that? So um, many people, I'm sure, sitting in uh, with us today, many of them may be knowing very good experimentation. So they can come up with some new ideas of uh, what could be done, you see. And uh, uh, there, there could be many people with a stronger uh, background in electronics, for example. So as you see, deep space communication is a very important aspect. This also, so uh, computer waste and many, I, I don't know, uh, I'm too weak on that. But the deep space navigation. So, I mean, sitting on Earth, we are able to talk to orbiter of Chandrayaan-2, we are able to talk to the uh, propulsion module of Chandrayaan-3, we are able to talk to the lander module or the lander as well as the uh, rover Pragyan sitting uh, on Earth and all of them can also mutually talk to each other except that we have designed that rover talks only to, to the Vikram lander and Vikram lander talks to us on Earth as well as to the uh, orbiter of Chandrayaan 2. So it's all together, it's all a live system like we are, like ours uh, at the moment, okay? All together we constitute and including me, an audience of 80 to 85 people and we are able to talk to each other. So this, uh, in this sense, and now we would also be talking to our Aditya L1, you see, and we have been actually talking. And please also remember that many other aspects, I, also I work in gravity theory is one of my 
which is a part of field theory in curvy space time. So, <coughs> uh, uh, space curvature of space time is to be taken into account also while putting a, a spacecraft into some orbit, whether it's around moon, whether it's around Earth, whether it's around a Lagrange point. You see, because space time is everywhere curved. So that, that is what your Einstein equation tells you. On the one side, you have the Einstein tensor G mu nu, maybe Ritchie scalar and some uh, metric tensor G mu nu. But on the right hand side, you have the energy momentum tensor. And this is in the loose language, people say that mass, the right hand side, energy momentum tensor, tells the space how to curve. Because the left hand side, the Einstein tensor, uh, Ritchie scalar, and the metric tensor, they that is determined purely by the geometry of the space time. And how is that fixed by us? We define only the metric tensor. Metric tensor, now making use of G mu nu, its components, okay? For example, let me say that uh, of diagonal elements are zero, only non-diagonal elements are, 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 are uh, non-zero. Then I can say that, okay, let me assume that they depend only on my radial coordinate and not, I can somehow, uh, I can somehow get rid of the time dependence, okay? So, uh, like if I assume phi, my scalar field to be some little r into e to the power uh, iota omega uh, j, uh, iota omega t, then phi star would have minus. So, phi star phi would depend only on r. So, you can make things depend only on the space variable. And now, you write down all the equations of motion, reduce them to these equations of these variables as a function of r, okay? O also, one important point while solving, I have to uh, told given some directions on nonlinear dynamics. When you want to study nonlinear dynamics of anything or just uh, simple uh, nonlinear differential equation or in, the, uh, uh, in my gravity calculations of boson stars, we end up with three or four equations of motion. Then all these field variables are uh, made dimensionless. We must make all of them as dimensionless. And we should also make the argument of these uh, variables also as dimensionless. So, every, so your equation of motion, now it's a pure mathematics problem. So then you determine the dynamics, solve for the equilibrium points and so on. So they do not depend on dimensions. You have to change the constants, redefine them, parameters, etc., in such a manner that they become dimensionless. So before you, so this is major, another major step. Dibyaji told us that uh, she is going to make a video recording of such talks. So many important points, whatever, whatever interests you more, you can listen that part again and again and make your own notes to, to proceed further on that. So my boss tells me that I have been speaking for something like one hour, 13 minutes. So uh, I was given one hour and 15 minutes. So I have another two minutes time. Uh, I would, from my side, this is what I wanted to communicate and tell you, but I would be very happy to, uh, to respond and answer the questions. I don't know if I told for some particular I have a question. Yes, please, please, please. So, when we talk about L1, uh, mathematically it's a single point, but uh, physically it should be spanning some space. Like, if we have many countries competing, I think uh, already US has a uh, observing, observing satellite that is very close to L1, and we are also going to rotate around the L1 from what you say. So, uh, how big is this uh, space around L1 that is... Uh, that is oh, almost, you know, uh, that's a, that's a good question, but yeah. a, as I said, uh, I would not have a, any numerical idea of the, the size, uh, but but it should be uh, big enough to be able, we, we can, we can and in fact, not only one spacecraft, we can park at a time, uh, we, we can park even more of these, but uh, uh, at the moment, I have no idea about the dimensions of this, but it's sufficient space. Uh, I, I, I would recommend Nirmalji, you please do look into these some of these websites, and there you will find very beautiful uh, phase diagrams and phase trajectories. So they are bending to this side, they are bending to in all other, and in between you find some area. 
so i have not gone still further into that but in my own research work uh, you might look up into my my work on boson stars uh, in the in the internet it's available there so there we always make phase plots or phase diagrams of boson stars <coughs> and uh, in this we encounter some stability points they are which are called as bifurcation points so i still remember it was uh, some years ago now this student of mine dr sanjeev kumar is a faculty member uh, in hansraj college of delhi university he absolutely brilliant boy and uh, i remember uh, he finished his phd in around 15 and 16 2015 shortly prior to that uh, in our first earlier papers we had only one bifurcation points so i would uh, i i enjoy his company so i sit with him and as, as i said i don't remember numerical uh, commands and so on he says sir i am here <laughs> you tell me your voice command is good enough i sit with him now one day he showed me that in this phase trajectory so you see you have to plot it point by point by point you have to have lot of patience and uh, writing such uh, computer programs is a million or billion dollar experiment that he has done so <clears throat> what happens supposing let me consider a figure of 8 okay on the vertical side let for the explanation purposes and now let me let me cut the up, the upper half of the uh, upper circle of 8 okay uh, supposing this this vertex in the in the trajectory of 8 i call it a, uh, let us say bifurcation point or first bifurcation point so if i find that when i change my parameters of the theory in such a manner that i get more points on the vertical side so i would have the curiosity would this uh, figure of 8 because this is a numerical result you see the nonlinear equations are so nonlinear and you are solving a set of coupled nonlinear differential equations which are highly nonlinear uh, so double prime prime comes square of prime or double prime of one variable and so on so this is four variable uh, four A set of four equations so we will have the curiosity would it again close the figure of 8 or not then in between for 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 changing our set of parameters he found that in between a, a small circle started coming then what would it mean he said sir this what is this is some new thing is happening so we said okay let us have patience you So you see, uh, in our case, we had to reduce the least count of our parameter. So, uh, for example, zero point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Initially, you go to zero point one, you don't find any almost anything data. Zero point one, two, three. When we start going to zero point six, you find one one bifurcation point. You see, when the your accuracy becomes so much, precision becomes so much. Then I said, Sanjeev, can we go a little bit? for the is it possible he says sir 10 to the power minus 8 then computer will read it as zero <laughs> i said okay uh, but let us be careful uh, change our parameters from this side that side here and there and then you see in between before closing the figure of 8 up stairs you find that in between there is a circle which means that this circle must have been surrounded by some other phase trajectories you see and they they, they might again cross then at the end in a series of over uh, 8 to 10 papers we were able to so then we were able to precisely find four a set of four bifurcation points then we eventually found that in fact a series of infinite sequence of bifurcation points exists in the phase diagram of boson star uh, this is the latest update so if you if you start doing it then these things are you see also very interesting and uh, so i proposed to make one calculation myself uh, then my other collaborators i will also take it up so two body problem sun and earth then we see uh, find this l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 but if we solve these equations ourselves without looking into the to the internet results then we have to be able to find these phase phase trajectories we have to make these constants as constant parameters by their slight change we have to learn this might be a very good project if some of you are interested in non linear dynamics or handling these things but you also need to have good you can make a team of you you see team of people 
वन पर्सन कैन नॉट डू एवरीथिंग आई आई जस्ट यू पर्सनली टॉक ब्ला 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 कॉन्सेप्ट माय माय अदर पीपल दे समबडी वर्क्स आउट द मैथमेटिक्स समबडी अलोंग विथ मैथमेटिक्स इज ऑल्सो गुड एट डूइंग समथिंग न्यूमेरिकल लाइक आई कैन नॉट मेक ए कंप्यूटर प्रोग्राम आई आई डिड स्मॉल कंप्यूटर प्रोग्राम लॉन्ग लॉन्ग एगो इट्स ए हिस्ट्री नाउ आई आई कैन नॉट डू इट बट 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 पीपल यंगर पीपल कैन डू इट so but, but once you do it it's your lifetime million dollar billion dollar experiment if you do it so it's not only uh, going to if you you uh, be useful only for once okay like in our earth sun system you can make this you will have a sequence of research papers very high quality i must tell you these would be counted as very high quality research papers and you can make some beautiful contributions to so uh, just make non linear dynamic or just pick up one dimensional harmonic oscillator to start with uh, uh, if you like so some some uh, function of x by for simplicity let us say d by by dx equal to ax plus b divided by cx plus d okay so linear d by by dx is has a linear uh, x and y and divided by something also linear in x and y not quadratic then it becomes too much you see so initially try that uh, they are autonomous system no time explicit time dependence if you like later on you can also introduce time dependence explicitly and so even for one dimensional harmonic oscillator try to plot some of the phase diagrams it's a very good interesting project uh, uh, along with your students and collaborators please try these things and we all stay in touch you can have my contact address from divya ji has promised me to put me on the whatsapp group of all of you so i accept sir, i will do that sir it's a miss of me i apologize we will do that sir we'll just add you we'll just add you to the group sir which one the, my email id no sir the phone number will do sir we will add you through your phone number sir okay okay so my phone number uh, let me read plus 91 yes sir then 70 420 Four two zero seven one five one six one five one six. Yes. I repeat, sir, seven zero four two zero double one five one six. No, 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 no. Seven zero seventy, then four twenty, then seven, followed by one five and one six. Please repeat. All right, sir. Yes, sir. I have it on record also. Sir, we manage. Se- yes, yes. Seven zero four two zero seven one five one six. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, we we'll do that. Sir. We will just add you, sir. By uh, in another yes, one hour, you'll be there, sir, in the group. So, uh, sure, sure, sir. sure, sure. I look forward to that. Uh, Dibya yes. ji, I I always remember that the uh, right now I am speaking, but I know that the the audience uh, and the participants, delegates sitting with me, they are uh, even more intelligent than me. I am very sure. It's only I have some knowledge, some wisdom of some kind. Some others have some other kind. so all of us are so i i remember that i am talking to a set of very brilliant intelligent people and and even curious and enthusiastic minds so that that that's great that's great in in fact i am very very grateful to all of you all the people so this is the first component i am a person who loves and respects the students i am one of one of my colleagues professor pankaj saran also a physicist Uh, senior to me he once wrote a facebook post saying that there can be nothing beautiful in the world uh, than looking into the eyes of your curious students the students they want to learn they want to have knowledge they want to also acquire degree but degree with knowledge and uh, if you do not uh, recognize this fact then you are not a good teacher you should better leave the teaching profession you should look into the curious eyes of your students lovingly what they want to have from you try to transfer if i know many big thing great things but if i don't communicate these things to you if i don't transmit my knowledge to you if i don't transfer my knowledge to you, then i am a useless person what is the use i ought to be able to transfer my knowledge to my uh, to my younger people to my students to my collaborators to my colleagues esteemed colleagues thank you, thank you sir that is such a great 
that is such, such a great uh, message from you for all these yeah. young physicists <laughs> who are sitting there. So uh, I wish we could keep talking to you, but I think we are running out of time. Oh, yeah, yeah, so ma, ma, I thank ma, you, sir. Ma, ma, I thank my boss tells me that it's ma, one, ma, one hour, 24 minutes sir. already. So, but, but before I forget, my, my very, very huge heartfelt thanks to all of you, all of you, with lots of love and best wishes. Thank you, sir. We all thank you, including and, Professor and, Sanjay and, Pant, and, is here. Yes, thank you, uh, sir. Uh, 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 no, uh, 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 please do forgive me for my shortcomings. Namaskar, sir. Thank namaskar, you, namaskar, namaskar, namaskar. Thank you, sir. Sir, no, sir uh, we, are, we are really on behalf of the Department of Physics and uh, HRDC. We are thank really you, thank you, you. Thank you so much. Love, love you. Love you, love you all. all. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, uh, Thank Professor you. Sanjay Pan, with this, we come to the last session, and I think our resource person has joined us. I could see that.